Well, we all live in difficult times, and that's, uh, these difficult times are not only because of COVID and because of the Ukraine uh, war, but we as human beings throughout our history, it has always been difficult times, right? There has always been war. There has always been poverty. There has always been hunger, people fleeing their countries. And this is quite strange, you would say, because we are on this earth already for a long time, and somehow we did not figure it out yet, right? So when they asked me to give this talk and to talk about intelligence, human intelligence, artificial intelligence, I was thinking to myself, that is not enough. Because with this intelligence of us, we clearly aren't smart enough. So I'm not going to talk about intelligence today. I didn't tell them yet, but I decided not to talk about intelligence. I'm going to talk about wisdom, because that is what we are lacking. We are lacking wisdom so much, and there are so many people suffering in this world, that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals came up with 17 goals. And these goals are goals like no poverty, no hunger, clean air, justice for all. It all has common sense, right? But apparently, we have to come up with goals to urge ourselves and our leaders to do the right thing. So who are we? Are we the intelligent human beings? No, we are not. We are called Homo sapiens. We are even, as we are sitting here, Homo sapiens sapiens. We are the wise ones. At least, that is how, how we call ourselves. Now look at these words. I looked them up in the dictionary, and what do you see when you go to human? You see relating to or characteristic of humans. Well, that doesn't say much, right? So uh, after that is see human entry two, and I looked at human entry two, and there it says bipedal primate mammal. Still, it doesn't say much. So maybe what we are is in the word sapiens. So let's look up the word wise. Wise, Oxford Dictionary. Having or showing the ability to make good judgment based on deep understanding and experience of life. So, apparently, that's what we are. But as I told you in the beginning, we clearly have a problem. We are the core of all these problems. But the question is, of course, can we be the solution? And anybody who knows me knows that in these kind of questions, I will always say yes. And I explain to you why. And I explain it to you in three insights. So you can all remember that and do the good thing afterwards. The first insight is we can change. That's a huge insight. And it's a huge thing. We can change because we have the ability of neuroplasticity. That's actually my expertise. And neuroplasticity means that the brain can adapt to its surrounding world. And it means, you see here a, a picture of neural network, and neural networks consist of neurons, and these neurons have axons and dendrites, and they make connections. And in these connections, which uh, are called synapses, information is transformed uh, transferred from one neuron to the other one. And these networks, they change constantly. You are sitting there listening to me, I am looking at you, and in this moment, your brain is changing. Your brain is already not the same anymore as it was when I walked in. Why? You are listening to me, Maybe you are remembering something, maybe you are feeling something, and you can only do this because your brain is changing. So everything we expose to, everything we feel, everything we think of, everything we, everything we do is changing our brain. 
But neuroplasticity has no direction in itself. It's not good, it's not bad. It's what you expose yourself to that determines how your brain will change. But inside one, we can change, right? Then we go to the second insight. And the second insight is, because of neuroplasticity, our inner world and our outer world actually fall together. And I have to explain that a little bit. You are in this world, and your brain has a certain structure and a certain functionality. And while you are in this world, you experience the outside world. And this outside world, you perceive it, and it's coming into your brain. And because of neuroplasticity, it is changing your brain in a specific way. So the outside world is actually coming into your brain. And because it changes your brain, a lot is changing. Because it's your brain that is connected to your feeling. It's responsible for your thinking. It's responsible for your actions. So when your brain is changing, because of your exposure to the outside world, your feelings are changing. Your actions are changing. Your thinking is changing. And of course, because of all of that is changing, you will be different in this outside world. You are changing the world again. And because the world is changing, your brain is changing again. Take a little pause to think about this, because it's very, very important that you understand this. What happens in the outside world changes your brain. And how your, how your brain is changed, it will change the outside world, right? So it matters what you expose yourself to. And it also matters what you expose other people to. Because immediately, it will change their brains. It depends, as I said before, on what you expose yourself to, how your brain will change. And we already know a lot about this. We know that if you are exposed, or you expose other people, to stress, violence, poverty, pollution, dehumanization, insecurity, antisocial behavior, and more of the like, then the networks in their brain change in a specific way. And it's especially networks that are connected with the prefrontal lobe that's a part of the brain that's behind uh, your forehead and behind your eye sockets. And evolutionary older networks that uh, are connected with pain and pleasure. So when you are exposed to these kind of aspects, you develop in such a way that it's very hard for you to deal with stress. That it's very easy for you, when there is stress, to come up with emotional reactions. It's very easy to get addicted. And it's also easy to choose for short-term things above long-term things. You change in a kind of egocentric person who thinks especially about itself and especially about the present. What feels good now what feels good for me, that's what I'm going to do. And you can understand that if the brain changes in such a way, that this will cause problems. Not only problems for yourself, like health problems, addiction, uh, loss of friends, etc., but also worldwide problems. If I think that I deserve more, if I think that only I and the present are important, well, you can now understand that that will lead to worldwide uh, problems. And that we need the SDGs, the 17 goals. But we also know from, re from research that if we expose ourselves or others to love, compassion, gratitude, safety, good role models, trust, if we see each other, if we are open-minded, if we are exposed to support and nature and pro-social behavior, so people that are, do not only think about themselves, but also about others, then these networks, they develop differently. And because of these networks develop differently, we 
develop differently. And we develop in persons that become stress-resistant, pro-social. We do not only think about ourselves anymore, but also about others. We have balance in our decisions with regard to short-term decisions and long-term decisions. We might say, and let's take a safe metaphor, I like chocolate a lot, I eat chocolate now, it gives me a lot of pleasure. But the next nine times that we see chocolate, we say, well, I still like it, but this time I'm not going to do it, right? Because it will influence my health. And again, this chocolate is just a safe metaphor. I'm talking about all the things that give us instant pleasure, but sometimes long-term pain. And not only for ourselves, but also for others. If we are exposed to aspects like this, we develop in what I called Homo sapiens virus. And what does that mean? That means truly genuine, uh, genuine human beings who do not only think about themselves, but also about others. Who do not only think about the present, but also about the future. And this brings me to the third insight. And the third insight is, if inner world and outer world fall together, then we can change the outer world by changing the inner world, and vice versa. If I change something in my inner world, I will change the outer world. And this is not only true for me. I do not have, like, superpowers. You all have this superpower. If you change your inner world, the outside world will change. And through the years, we as human beings already developed in many fields. And this brought us a lot of progress. We developed in health, we developed in education, we developed in tech, we developed in so many things. But I can't help thinking, when I was preparing this talk, that we forgot something in our development. We forgot deliberately developing our inner world. And that's why we are still in these difficult times, in this world full of problems that already were there 2,000 years ago. And if we don't change, still will be there after us. So let me stress again and remind you of the importance of de for development in love, compassion, gratitude, safety, etc. If we put our minds to developing that, our inner world will change and the outer world will change. So I ask you all, isn't it time to develop these aspects? And if you do not understand the urgency of that part of our human development yet, let me give some other urgency so that you realize it fully. Because how you are now, your present brain, your inner world, determines the inner world of the next gen. Because of neuroplasticity, what the next generation is exposed to that is how they will develop. And because inner and outer world fall together, what they are exposed to will determine our future world. Not only for them, but also for us. So, I'll summarize it. We can be the solution, because we can change. Our inner and outer world fall together, and we can change the outer world by changing the inner world on these specific subjects that I was talking about. I would like to say to you all, we are the limited present, but we can become the boundless future. Choose to be Homo sapiens virus and change the world for all of us. Thank you very much.